sir, we've seen what happened in the last days in Afghanistan. Are you worried about Afghanistan? Extremely worried. The reason is that um, what we hoped was a political settlement would take place. Uh, the political settlement is looking difficult right now. And it's looking difficult right now because the Taliban are refusing and we tried, I, I persuaded, tried to persuade the Taliban. This is months back, three or four months back. The Taliban senior leadership came here and we tried to persuade them to come to some sort of a political settlement. The only thing that would stop uh, Afghanistan from descending into uh, anarchy is a political settlement. Uh, but unfortunately, the Taliban, when they were here, they felt that um, they would not, they refused to talk to Ashraf Ghani. Mm -hmm. Their condition is that as long as Ashraf Ghani is there, we are not going to talk to the Afghan government. And I, here I want to say that in 2019, when Pakistan persuaded Taliban to start talking to the Americans, uh, I suggested that there should be an, before the presidential election, there should be an interim government so that, uh, you know, the election would be inclusive. But unfortunately, the Afghan government uh, was very critical about this remark about there being an, an interim setup. And they went ahead with the elections, and uh, President Ghani got elected. Now, once President Ghani got elected, and the Taliban got excluded, it was always going to be a problem from then onwards. Because Ashraf Ghani insisted that the Taliban should talk to him. The Taliban did not recognize him. They didn't recognize the elections. And they would refuse to talk to him. So that's where the problem started. And that problem still is there. Now, uh, the Afghan government is extremely critical about Pakistan. They think we are some, we have some magic powers that we will make Taliban do whatever we want to do. Uh, they don't realize that um, uh, that the Taliban, the moment the Americans started drawing down their troops, and especially when they gave an exit. From then onwards, our leverage on Taliban was minuscule, diminished, because the Taliban thought they had won the war. They, they had won the war by not losing to the Americans. And in their mind that once the Americans left, then, um, you know, then they had won. So to try and persuade them when there was a, when a time was given for exiting Afghanistan by Americans, it became extremely difficult to try and persuade them. And Afghan government, unfortunately, is now blaming Pakistan for what is happening there. They somehow think that Pakistan has supernatural powers. We are a superpower plus, which can, um, you know, which has such power that 70, 60, 70,000 Taliban can take on 300,000 Afghan government troops with, with air, aircrafts and with uh, modern weapons. And somehow, you know, we have that power to make them win. So uh, the Afghan come, and the other reason is Afghan come, and I think right now from what I can see, they are blaming Pakistan as well as they are now trying everything to somehow get the Americans back into Afghanistan. You know, the whole posturing right now is that the, they're blaming the Americans for this debacle, Pakistan and the Americans. And they are trying to somehow uh, persuade the Americans to actually intervene. And their they are, they are listeners in the American uh, uh, political s system who, who are listening to the Taliban and using these things that women are at risk and all the pro, those who supported the NATO troops, they are at risk. And somehow they want the Americans to again intervene. But this is, uh, you know, uh, they've been there for 20 years. What will they do now, which they didn't do in 20 years? So it's a, it's a, so this is the situation right now. You asked me a question uh, about us being worried. We are worried because the direct impact of this descending into a, a prolonged civil war, this is what we think will happen. It will be a prolonged, 
protracted civil war, and the, the country that will be most affected after Afghanistan will be Pakistan. We will be affected, number one, that uh, more Pashtuns are in Pakistan than in Afghanistan. Taliban is basically a Pashtun movement, so it will flow into our Pashtun areas. And, you know, it happened in two, after 2003, uh, four. it happened that our Pashtun areas uh, reacted to what was happening in Afghanistan, and Pakistan lost 70,000 people in that because we supported the Americans. And so there's a likelihood that, again, in our Pashtun areas, we will have problems. So that's number one. And then having lost 70,000 people and 100, over $100 billion lost to the economy, half of our tribal area people were internally displaced. About 3 million people were internally displaced. So, so that's number one worry. Number two is refugees. We already have 3 million refugees in Pakistan, Afghan refugees. 3 million registered. We think there are over about 500,000 more than that. So the last thing we want, our economy is just recovering. We do not want another um, inflow of refugees. And number three is that you know we have now great plans of uh, uh, our connectivity right into Central Asia through Afghanistan. This, I just went to uh, Tashkent with, to um, work on this uh, railway from uh, from. Trans, uh, from Uzbekistan connecting through Afghanistan, through Mazar Sharif, and into Pakistan, which would connect this whole area. So this is our future, you know, it's uh, geoeconomics. And we are worried that if there is a s civil war in Afghanistan, this whole uh, our economic agenda of connectivity with, with uh, Central Asia goes out of the window. So that's our worry. Sir, uh, in case of the Taliban takeover of Kabul, what will be your government's policy? Will you close the border or cut relations with Afghanistan? What will happen, I can't say. But what Pakistan wants is Pakistan will deal with any government that is, uh, that is uh, uh, elected or selected by the people of Afghanistan. So whoever Afghanistan, people of Afghanistan, the government, they they, they feel represents them, Pakistan will work with them, whichever that government is. What would the Taliban takeover mean for Pakistan? Taliban takeover depends what sort of a Taliban takeover it is. If it is a Taliban takeover which becomes inclusive with other players and, you know, uh, it includes, you know, it, it will be uh, the best thing for, 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 for Afghanistan. If, if it is an inclusive government. But if it is, uh, you know, exclusive government with uh, fighting going all, all over Afghanistan, we believe that if the Taliban try and form an exclusive government through military takeover, this will mean a protracted civil war. And that is, as I said, a nightmare scenario for Pakistan. So there is a, it seems, even though everyone's gathered in Doha uh, today, as well. uh, it seems like there's a last ditch effort to try to come to some sort of solution. Uh, uh, do you think there's lots of uh, suggestions as to how this could move forward? The Taliban have one suggestion too, which is that Ashraf Ghani should step aside. Uh, if it means, given how much Pakistan has at stake, would you would you support such a move? I mean, if if if, if it comes to this consensus that a elected president should step aside. Um, number one, at, at, the, at the moment, the top priority should be a ceasefire because obviously civilians are affected and civilians will get more and more affected as this, uh, this fighting rages uh, and gets into the main cities. Once the fighting gets into the main cities, then there will be heavy civilian casualties. So therefore, at all costs, there should be a ceasefire. Now, what would it take for a ceasefire? Uh, and that's what the Doha talks are all about. So, you know, I'm, uh, I'm not a big one into military solutions. I believe that, you know, as a politician, we always should look for a political settlement. Now, you know, let's hope that there is, um, 
there is some sort of a political settlement, but that will only happen if Taliban realize that they cannot take over the whole of Afghanistan through military means. And uh, the, the, the government side realizes that they do have to give to come to the ceasefire. So they will also have to make uh, compromises. So that's really what these talks are all about. Can they, can they meet on a middle ground? Now, whatever that middle ground is, I guess the talks will decide. So do you think influence of uh, so Pakistan's influence of Taliban has been decreased compared to 1990s? What, what do you think about that? Let, let me remind you that you know Pakistan was the three governments that recognized the Taliban government in 2001. When, before the Americans toppled the Taliban government. And probably Pakistan was the most influential government. Despite that, when Pakistan wanted, uh, on behest of the Americans, for Afghan government, uh, for Taliban to hand over Osama bin Laden to the Americans, the Taliban refused. So the, even then, the influence of Pakistan was not all encompassing. But let me just say one thing. As a student of history, and especially of uh, Afghan history, anyone who thinks that Afghanistan can be controlled from outside does not understand the character of the Afghan people. Throughout their history, they have never accepted outside, uh, outside uh, control. Take the first, uh, the three of the British Afghan wars, which happened, there were three. Then the Russians, it was a, everyone knows the Russian history. And now this recent 20 year old American uh, misadventure. So if you look at all of them, uh, one thing comes out that the Afghan people of Afghanistan do not, they cannot be made puppets. I can, if I was the Pakistani policy maker in the 90s, I would not have encouraged this idea of strategic depth, which Pakistan policy was at the time. Very understandable because the seven times size of Pakistan is India, um, a hostile Eastern neighbor. And the Pakistani security uh, setup was always worried about uh, uh, Pakistan facing two fronts, East and West hostilities. So therefore there was, a, there was always an attempt to have a pro-Pakistan government in Afghanistan. But in my opinion, uh, whichever government comes into power in Afghanistan would have to work with Pakistan. And Pakistan should work with any, any government that comes, which is selected by people of Afghanistan. Um, rather than trying to influence governments in Afghanistan, uh, if you look back at the history, it does not work. The Afghan people do not accept it. So even now when we, we, you know, we talk about if the Taliban takeover takes place, will it be a pro-Pakistan government? Whichever government comes into Afghanistan, it will, if it is ever perceived to be controlled from outside, it loses credibility within Afghanistan. Afghanistan, people of Afghanistan will only back a government that represents their people and stands for their interests. So therefore, uh, my policy ever since my government has come into power, we have reached out to all the Afghan factions to the Northern Alliance, to you know, who were who were perceived to be you know um, anti-Pakistan, Hamid Karzai, I've talked to, I've uh, uh, you know uh, Abdullah Abdullah I invited, I talked to them, all of them we tried to convince that look we now have no favorites in Afghanistan, whoever come whichever government comes into power, Pakistan will work with them. about this this week, uh, the view in the West, Northern Afghanistan, that once the Taliban take over in Afghanistan, Pakistan would have achieved its final goal. Is that a misconception? You see, the, again I repeat, if uh, the Taliban take over, because Afghanistan is ethnically divided population, Taliban, uh, Pashtun are only about 45% of the population, then there are Tajiks, then there are Hazara, Uzbeks. So it's a, it's a, Afghanistan, the reason it has been a decentralized uh, government is because of the different population mix. So therefore, if one population tries to impose itself on the rest, one ethnic group, there will, will be a constant uh, 
uh, what's the word, um, unrest in Afghanistan. And that is not what Pakistan wants, which is why we want an exclusive government. Because if there is an unrest, if Pakistan will be affected because, as I said, we have a larger Pashtun population here than in Afghanistan. And Pashtun are probably the most xenophobic people on earth. They fight each other normally, but when there is an outside thing, they all get together. And so it, it affects, so Pakistan got sucked into Afghanistan after 2001 when we, um, you know, when we sided with the American war on, supposedly war on terror, but this converted into something else. And we had a civil war in our, in our tribal areas. And that was the main reason. We, we had two reasons why Pakistan lost 70,000 people by joining the Americans. Number one, the old jihadi organizations which were created to fight jihad in, against the Soviets, they all turned against Pakistan because Pakistan suddenly was telling them that against Soviet occupation it was jihad, but against American occupation it's terrorism. So they turned against Pakistan. And then second was the, in the tribal areas, there was a, literally a civil war against Pakistan because we were pro-American. Basically all the sympathies were with Pashtuns, not Taliban, with the Pashtuns. And they turned against the, there was a, uh, you know, as I said, half the population was internally displaced of the tribal areas, which still is recovering from the devastation. Hence, it's in Pakistan's interest that there is a, a political settlement and all factions come a government that represents everyone. You quoted three, you quoted three is US fighter jet are, are coming from Qatar to Afghanistan through Pakistan's airspace. So is it true? And is, is there any agreement with the United States? Uh, well, uh, we, we have made it very clear that Pakistan is not, um, first of all, our soil will not be used to be uh, so that we get again embroiled in an Afghanistan civil war. So we, we do not want any bases in Pakistan. We don't want our soil to be used uh, for attacks into Afghanistan. And as far as I know that after 31st, the Americans are going to stop all sorts of uh, 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 even air attacks on uh, Afghanistan. One last question. Hmm? Uh, so the two main players in Afghanistan, any solution are the United States and Pakistan. Uh, the heads of the two governments have not spoken yet. I want to know the state of relations between your government and President Joe Biden's government on Afghanistan. And moving forward, do you think that Pakistan is going to be scapegoated? And what is Pakistan's strategy when it says we have other options? Uh, the NSA has also said. Let, let, me, let me say three things. Number one. Uh, Pakistan has already been being made a scapegoat by an uh, Afghan government. And the Afghan government is doing so because it is taking, um, it is blaming Pakistan for all the misgovernments and the, the, the kleptocratic government that Afghanistan has been. I mean, clearly 70,000 uh, uh, Taliban should not be sort of dominating a 300,000 well-equipped with air cover of Han, unless the population is, uh, is uh, helping the Taliban. It cannot happen otherwise. So rather than looking at the reasons why they have not been able to provide the governance that was required for winning over the population, and secondly, uh, the whole hasty way that the Americans have suddenly left, the Americans, if, if you wanted a political settlement, Common sense is that you do the political settlement from a position of strength. So when you have 150,000 NATO troops there, that was the time to do a political settlement. People like me were all the time saying that, you know, there were, there's no military solutions to do a political settlement. We were all, I was called anti-American. I was called Taliban Khan because of that. And people like us were sort of sidelined for even saying, talking about a political settlement. So having not done a political, political settlement from a position of strength. Now, blaming Pakistan when you have, uh, when, when there, there's no leverage left, when the Taliban think they're winning, uh, for the Afghan government, although mind, mind you, first time I'm seeing that the Afghan government are not blaming the Americans the way they exited. So they too are not blaming the Americans. 
So finally, um, uh, and the other thing about, you know, I keep uh, having the President Biden hasn't called me. Well, it's his option if he wants to call or not. It is business if he thinks it's necessary or not. I mean, uh, not that I am waiting for any phone call. You know, it's his prerogative. These are friends are visiting from Delhi, so I just thought maybe we can have a difference of uh, bit, uh, strategy in Delhi and Pakistan on Corona also. The way we fought is totally different. Can I ask you one last question oh. towards Afghanistan? Hmm. You're a close ally to China. What would you see the future role of China in Afghanistan? Uh, I, I think the answer to your question also is that, that I think that the Americans have uh, decided that India is a strategic uh, partner now. And I think that's why there's a different way of treating Pakistan now. And also they feel that we're very close to China and then they want to sideline China. So I think in the broader strategic uh, policy of the US, I think that's what is reflected uh, in, in the way they have uh, dealt with Pakistan. It, Pakistan is just considered only to be useful in the context of somehow getting, uh, settling this mess uh, which has been left be behind after 20 years of uh, trying to find a military solution when there was not one. Um, I feel that uh, China is an emerging superpower uh, and uh, China is uh, for us, for Pakistan, it's very important because China has helped us in a very difficult time. You know, so we are, we are obviously grateful to China the way they've helped us. Uh, but it's not an exclusive thing. You know, uh, even CPEC for us is we've invited all the countries, Europeans, any country can join us in this. Uh, Pakistan's main concern now is our economics. Our real concentration is now to lift, we have 220 million people. My main job is to uh, look at their well-being, lift people out of poverty. And from and that point of view, China has been very helpful because China has done probably no human, human in human history, no country has ever done lifting almost 700 million people out of poverty. So that's really our main, uh, where China is helping us a lot. Will China have a role in Afghanistan? Uh, China is a neighbor, you know, obviously China will have a role in the rebuilding of Afghanistan. Uh, yes, I think so. So, can I just one last question? Uh, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has proposed to involve Pakistan and Hungary to protect and run Kabul's international airport following the withdrawal of other NATO-led foreign troops. So far, no clear response has come from Pakistan. What is the Pakistan position to safeguarding the Kabul airport? Um, I've just had a meeting with um, Turkey's defense minister. And we will be trying, the best thing is for Turkey and the Taliban to have a face-to-face -face dialogue. Uh, so both can talk about the reason why that uh, uh, Kabul airport has to be secured. And so we will, we are, we will be talking to the Taliban to uh, use our influence for them to have a face-to-face -face talk with uh, Turkey.